Greetings fellow gorehounds and welcome back to another blood splattered vlog. Alrighty then, this week's movie is a movie that crosses over two epic Japanese horror franchises that I honestly never thought were really gonna cross paths. And the movie I'm of course talking about is Sadako vs. Kayako, otherwise known as The Ring vs. The Grudge. And goddamn, I've been waiting for this movie since the late 90s, early 2000s. These are two franchises that just scared the shit out of me when I was a kid. And honestly, ever since I saw Freddy vs. Jason, they were two franchises that I thought like would be perfect if they meshed together. I say perfect, but you would have to find some sort of reason to actually justify them fighting each other, which this movie actually does, but um, let's just say it's a little stupid as shit. Did I just say a little stupid as shit? This movie is a lot stupid as shit, and I say that as someone who thoroughly enjoyed it. Which pretty much lets the cat out of the bag on how I feel about this movie. It is thoroughly stupid as all hell, but I actually enjoyed it despite all its problems. It takes a little too long to get to the point, there's a bunch of unnecessary plot threads, and it plays really fast and loose with the mythologies of both characters. Like, for example, for no goddamn reason whatsoever, the ring now takes two days instead of seven days in order to kill you. Which I guess was done for expediency's sake, but you probably could have made room for all seven days had you actually removed some of these pointless plot threads throughout the movie. But yeah, the ultimate grudge match in the title of the movie doesn't happen until the last 15 minutes, and you're sitting there when it happens going like, oh shit, it's already over. It's really awesome and exciting when it happens, but you still kind of want a little more. Now granted, it is way better for a movie to leave you wanting more than make you feel like you got way too much. But even still, I feel like this movie could have done with at least 10 more minutes of Sadako vs. Kayako action. Love is in the air. I mean, for fuck's sake, the viral marketing campaign leading up to this movie I felt like had way more Sadako vs. Kayako action than the actual movie. And I am 100% including that baseball video in this equation. That video was fucking amazing. And that was definitely up there with the Freddy vs. Jason Muhammad Ali style boxing debate they did leading up to that movie. So an A plus for the marketing campaign of this movie, but about a C minus for the movie overall. And yes, I'm saying C minus as someone who still enjoyed the movie despite its flaws. I just don't understand why the first hour and a half of this movie had to serve as like a soft reboot for both franchises given that Sadako 3D was not that long ago. I'm pretty sure everyone not only in Japan, but also the world at large already knows what the and the grudge are at this point. But whatever, I guess they really needed to make sure that everyone knew who these two characters were before they fought, even though I'm pretty sure everyone already does. Or, they just needed to pat out the running time because they didn't have much of a budget to actually film a very long fight. And I know some of you out there are gonna be saying like, hey, it takes a while for Freddy vs. Jason to fight in their movie, and to that I would say I agree, but their fight is actually a little more satisfying than this fight. Freddy vs. Jason has a fight both in the dream world on Freddy's terms and one in the real world on Jason's terms. And both of those fights take about 10 to 20 minutes, so you get about a half hour to 40 minutes of Freddy vs. Jason battling each other in that movie. And in the build up to them fighting, it actually shows them face to face actually interacting with one another a couple times. For example, when Freddy disguises himself as Jason's mother at the beginning of the movie. Whereas in this movie, Sadako and Kayako are completely disconnected until the last 15 minutes. And you're just waiting the whole time to see them cross paths at least once before the final confrontation and it never happens. That all being said, when they finally do confront one another, holy shit, that fight is stupid as hell and super fun. And the way the fight ultimately culminates, the actual conclusion of it, when someone finally wins the brawl, holy shit, guys, this is the dumbest thing I've seen in a long time. And I say that, once again, as someone who enjoyed it. Anyway, my fellow gorehounds, Sadako vs. Kayako is currently available in North America via some platforms like Shudder, so check that out if you want to. And with that all said, uh, let us move on to the spoilers. <laughs> Okay, so this movie has two parallel stories running concurrently. The first story is these two college girls who buy this VHS player in order to transfer this old wedding tape into a DVD. And within the old VHS player is the tape from The Ring, which they end up watching and they end up getting cursed and they end up having to go to their teacher who is an expert on urban legends, who ultimately tells them that they have two days to live instead of seven for some weird, strange, nonsensical reason. And that if they want to live, they have to find some way to pass the curse on. 
and the second story involves this high school girl who moves in next to the grudge house and starts having reoccurring nightmares of kids being trapped inside the house. Because one day she was walking home from school and came across these kids that were daring each other to go inside the house, and then the next day the kids completely disappear so she starts worrying that oh shit something inside the house got them. Which is another example of them playing really fast and loose with the mythology. Apparently in this movie just walking into the house the grudge ghost will just take you immediately. Basically if the original grudge operated on this timeline it would have been over in like the first 10 minutes. But whatever, I guess like the alien gestation period in Alien vs Predator, they sped it up for no real reason because you still have to wait an hour and a half for things to happen. So glad we made those changes. So anyway, the two college girls who are cursed by the ring end up meeting with this old Shinto priest who performs an exorcism on the girls. But the exorcism goes horribly wrong in one of the best scenes of the movie bar none, and Sadako totally just ends up murdering everyone involved with this exorcism except for the two girls. But it turns out, before the exorcism failed, the Shinto priest called this like rock star Shinto priest named Kaizo or something like that in order for him to come and seal the deal. And this guy is hands down my favorite character in the movie. He shows up with this little blind girl who can see ghosts and basically immediately surmises, oh shit, you've been cursed by Sadako, you're fucked. And the girls are like, oh shit, can you help us? And the guy's just like, I have an idea. And next thing we know, we see this guy actually checking out the grudge house, and then it becomes very clear what his plan is. His ultimate plan is, since no one has successfully exercised Sadako or Kayako, maybe if he got them to fight, they would cancel each other out. Basically, get someone to be cursed by both entities and have them fight for the person's soul. So that if they're fighting, then they're obviously not killing the person, and if they cancel each other out, then the person is free. Which, I actually like that justification to get these two to fight one another. It's really stupid, but it actually works. But on the other hand, I don't understand why we needed to have both of these storylines in order for this brawl to happen. And what I mean by that is, if you only need one person to be cursed by both curses, why do we have both the high school girl and the college girls? Why not just have the college girl storyline? Because all you really need is to have the priest go like, no, no, walk into the grudge house and then they'll fight. You don't need the girl who lives next to the grudge house in order to set up the grudge house. Like, you could have just early on set up the grudge house by having one of the college girls run into those kids that were daring each other to go into the house. It already felt like most of the grudge stuff was really tacked onto this movie and that it was really a ring movie overall. So if that's the case, why waste our time with this secondary girl that serves no narrative purpose whatsoever? I just don't feel like this was the most efficient script this movie could have had. But anyway, the rock star Shinto priest ends up getting the two girls to meet one another and they end up going inside the house and playing the tape. Sadako shows up and Kayako shows up. They have this really awesome brawl where they're like grabbing each other with each other's hair and like pulling each other into the darkness. But the priest quickly realizes, oh shit, it's not working. They're just getting more powerful. So they try to trap both ghosts inside this well in the backyard of the old grudge house, which I don't think that well was there in the original grudge movie. I'm pretty sure that was an addition for this movie. But what ends up happening Happening is the two ghosts end up combining into one giant just Lovecraftian monstrosity before ultimately shrinking into a combination of Kayako and Sadako. So you got this really creepy combination of Sadako and Kayako's movements as well as the <laughs> and then the movie ends with them running at the screen like <laughs> which was stupid as hell but you know what at that point I was actually on board with the movie. I don't know what it was, having no actual winner and just having them combine into one giant monster at the end, that was kind of brilliant. Though I do wish instead of running at the screen we actually got to see them kill our heroes, but eh, that's just a minor complaint. But what I really love is at the end of the movie they end up replaying the tape from the ring, but instead of the old image of like Sadako climbing out of the well, it's now the Sadako Kayako hybrid. Which was fucking amazing. Just goddamn, I can't believe this movie ended ultimately with a Dragon Ball Z style fusion dance between Sadako and Kayako. That was just the stupidest and most amazing thing ever. Anyway, my fellow gorehounds, like I said earlier, I give this movie about a C-. It's got a lot of problems, it takes way too long to get to the point. But when it finally gets there, those last 15 minutes are really fucking just... Mm. Just fucking awesome. And with that all said, my fellow gorehounds, as per usual, like, comment, subscribe, and be sure to ring that notification bell so that you're notified right away when my videos go up. And as always, my fellow gorehounds, peace out, and I'll catch y'all later.